Hey everybody, this is Carl back again for another movie spoiler review. And today I'll be covering the Disney classic, it should be a classic by this point, uh, Lilo and Stitch. Just to wrap up International Women's Month, I thought we ended on a good note with, uh, honestly, a, a great cast of characters, but more so with like uh, Lilo and her family, her ohana if you will so uh before we continue please uh, like if you enjoy videos like this and you want to follow me in other media content you can follow me on instagram youtube twitch all links in the description below uh the like will be greatly appreciated um yeah so i didn't even know this but you know Stitch is voiced by the co-director Chris Sanders, but yeah, he directed, but also the other director, Dean DeBlois. Uh, we got uh, Devi Chase, who voices Lilo. Kia Carreri as Nani Pelecki. Uh, Jason Scott Lee as David Kawana. David Ogden Steers as Jumba. Kevin McDonald as Pleaky, Bing Rames as Cobra Bubbles. I get over that name. Kevin Michael Richardson as Captain Gantu, and Zoe Cadwell as the Grand Councilwoman. Did you even bother to give her a specific name? Just Grand Councilwoman. Kind of lazy. Uh, but uh, this movie came out in two thousand and two. God, as like twenty two years ago. Dear God, but man, I remember like the uh, uh, the marketing of this uh, film was insane. It's like just you know, Stitch and advertisement just messing up other Disney property movies, like hitting on Princess Jasmine and taking on a ride on a, uh, of his uh, you know red spaceship. It, it was like a cruiser or whatever it was freaking hilarious he, he just like he just like utter chaos uh and they went through a lot of designs it was like you can look up the concept art of what they probably had an idea for stitch but i think they hit right on the money with the design that he has right now and the voice of stitch is just like kind of spot on it's like you know it's not as annoying as something like Jar Jar or even like the Minions. It's just like a sweet spot. And I think like the way like Stitch is depicted is what George Lucas wanted to do with Jar Jar. His initial concept was something like, you know, something like Stitch, but he fell off on the market because Jar Jar, if Jar Jar did not look ugly as sin, I think maybe people would have forgiven the voice. But considering Stitch is like a fluffy, fluffy type of animal-like thing, we f we can easily forgive everything else. And the fact that, unlike Jar Jar, he has some he has layers to him. He's not just you know failed comic relief. He's you know you know it's kind of like R two D two in a way. Like we can empathize because the way his beep boop sound, and it seems like. You can tell he's sad, and it's like you know, you know, uh, even though Stitch can speak a little bit, he, you know, you feel when he's sad, and he's like, it's like you can share his emotions, uh, and just the utter chaos that he brings is just like hilarious. So the, you know, he is like a great design of a character you know, from uh, inside on out. Um. The art in this is fantastic. And before we get really into it, the way they drew, uh, drew Nani, she is one of like the many, you know, thick mommy characters uh, that DreamWorks, Disney, and Pixar, you know, you know, take the time to make sure they, you know, accentuate the curves. And it's greatly appreciated. And it's like, I, you know, like, Many young kids 
grew up loving like you know the thick uh, ladies C come on it's like uh uh, uh 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 if she's thick you won't quit you know you got nani uh the that woman from the atlantis lost empire uh you got um mrs incredible uh 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 uh, shell from uh road to el dorado it was, it was thick ladies it's like and that's why people you think people was wrong for being up in arms about the fact that rogue doesn't have the courage that we remember her from the original 90s x-men show that they kind of like slender a bit in, in the uh uh sequel that just came out and like i understand that grievances we like the fact that they accentuate the curves of a woman so sue us i'm sorry it's pleasing to the eye so that's why i love the look of nani she's really hot and i love the character she's you know endearing and that's another thing that i chose this on the list of movies i want for uh, international women's month because nani and leela are incredible female characters you feel for them they ain't just girl bosses they got you know issues there, there's this like uh uh you know because they you know uh are the only two family left which i don't know to think about it's like you know you got because the parents died in a car crash and so nani is you know the sole like caregiver of lilo and of course you know nani's probably like a young 20 something caring for this you know essentially what like i don't know how old lilo would be is like you know not like a toddler toddler but it's like maybe a couple of years older than a toddler uh um uh, but it's just like I, I, you just want to just you're so invested in this family and you learn a lot of like uh hawaiian language like to this day i know what ohana means uh uh you you can bring up to you i you know i challenge you to walk up to just a random person and ask them do you know what ohana means and i think like at least like you know somewhere between 80 to 90 percent people would know it means family because of lilo and stitch uh because they drive that point home multiple times and not in like a hacky way, but it's just like when the situation calls for it, when things are getting like, uh, you know, serious or dramatic scenes. Um, anyway, uh, the movie begins where in, we're in space and uh, we meet this Galactic Federation and they are arresting Jumbo for illegally creating uh experiment 626 which will later be known as stitch uh by lilo and jumbo specifically created him for just utter destruction but no other drive and of course you know he just is wanting destruction and of course the councilwoman is like expects like I want to give this creature a chance. Uh, can you understand me? Like, uh, let me know that you can be able to communicate in in a civilized manner. And of course, he says some gibberish, and it causes everybody to just grow nauseous. Because who who knows what he said? It's utter nonsense. But I kind of like that we don't know specifically. Nobody translates or anything like that. We just know it's something completely vile. And so he sentenced him to exile and Jumbo to be arrested. But uh, while Gantu is making his way, escorting Stitch to uh, this desolate, you know, uh, asteroid or something to live out the rest of St uh, Stitch's days, Stitch makes an es his escape, you know, in the most gross slash awesome display of intelligence because he's not an idiot. So he realized that these tracker guns is specifically 
uh tracking his uh every move, movement because they took a blood sample from him and it put in his machine so it only recognizes him nobody else and got to not too long ago expressed that he's nearly invulnerable bulletproof but you see them injecting a needle in him to extract blood and it's like i know it's kind of nitpicky but it's something i know is really quick that i never picked on until like actually trying to do this for a review so i had to pay attention at least a little bit what was going on or at least you know certain details that pops into my mind and it's like didn't y'all say he's nearly bulletproof so why would a needle be able to penetrate his skin but it does so now stitch you know you know spits on the you know warden or whoever's like monitoring the situation and the trackers gets distracted and shoot at the uh guard and stitch making the escape and it takes two shrapnel pieces to block any other blasters hops away and then foster air vent you know steals a you know so circus the entire uh you know get to ship steals one of his rides and makes his you know uh, a hyper uh like a hyper jumps his way to earth the nearest uh planet so the councilwoman decides to get pleaky and you know releases jumba on the conditions like okay if you help us help us capture uh uh 626 you will be uh your your crimes will be expunged so uh stitch makes his way to earth while uh uh, we meet uh lilo and nani and of course lilo is such a sweet girl we immediately immediately we love this girl we just like because she is the voice actors did an incredible job and then she, i think she worked on a couple of uh studio ghibli movies she was on she was uh, cast in that donnie darko film that cult movie I, I never watched donnie darko i don't like horror movies like that uh but i know she's in it um but she plays like young girls you know in, in terms of voice acting very well uh so we're just endearing to her because you you the way she's carrying the uh the tone of like like you know those serious or not serious but it's serious to the little girl because like she plays little girls very well because young kids makes you know things are so important to them it is trivial to most adults but it's you know important to her like like i need to like give her like this fish my peanut butter jelly sandwich we don't have peanut butter jelly we don't have peanut butter in the house you know what we have you know what my sister said we gotta give her tuna you know what tuna is fish fish that is a crime against humanity it's like she's so adorable and you feel for her immediately it's like she's like that is i mean technically she's right it's kind of effed up it's like giving chicken nuggets to feeding chicken nuggets to chicken it's kind of effed up in a way uh everybody knows this but then uh this is my favorite part uh where this other little girl because she was you know practicing like the hula dance thing and this one girl one girl called her weird and just on sight, <laughs> Leo's like, "Oh, you catch these hands," and she starts like wailing on this girl. And it's like she bit me. <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, this little girl is feisty. Oh my god, like I just love Lilo. Everybody just like, I bet you, immediately after that happened, when she just starts wailing on that other girl everybody was just immediately fell in love with lilo from that moment on because this is not something you expect from many child characters uh without it being like uh hacky in a way it's like you merely like you know because like this kid like just has nice you know sensibilities and just to hear this other girl just 
call her out her name like that. It's just like, it's just like, they don't just take it on a chance. She's like, no, F that. <laughs> yeah, she's not meek at all. Uh, but she immediately apologizes, knowing, like, it's like little kids. It's like, knowing that they're going to be in trouble, they immediately apologize just to hopefully, like, they don't get in trouble. So it's like, this is one of the, honestly, one of the, probably next to, like, uh, Kevin McAllister. Uh, in terms of, or even like the kid from Sixth Sense, or the uh, the Bruce Willis movie, the kid that you know, little boy there. Those are like in, uh, in the top, just off the top of my head, or like a definition of like you know, realistic children. Uh, in film, part of all time. Without them seeing like, well, I put still Kevin McAllister on that list, but some might argue it's like, oh, it's like, well, he did it right. But then after him, then, you know, for at least a handful of years, or even like, no, I, I've almost forgot about uh, the kid from T2, uh, John Connor, young John Connor in T2. He's another one that's like, you know, great realistic kid in movies but ever since kevin McAllister, it's been like a handful of years that movies that depicts you know kids they try to copy that blueprint and it doesn't work for everybody and it's because like oh that that young kid that knows more than the adults and behaves like you know it's like you know that gets kind of cliche after a while and it just doesn't work for everyone there's the same way after like dark knight they try to make everything like batman and it's not you know not every super superhero can fit in that batman mold it doesn't work and so that's why i appreciate it when like hey you know you know like if you have kids uh or if you've been around kids long enough you babysit uh, you know uh, quite a handful of times growing up you know how children will behave and the list of kids i just listed are what kids normally would act like various ages but you know this is like real world kind of stuff you know they're not dumb but they're not like know-it-alls either they don't know everything that's where they need like the parent or the guardian to come into place uh Lilo is one of those kids that, you know, uh, it's probably, you know, every once in a while says something pretty wise and, you know, uh, and doesn't back down, but she also acknowledges, she's also smart enough to know that you know, she still gets a kid and still needs, you know, her older sister. And uh, that's just like a good balance. Uh, so uh after she getting mocked by those other girls she was told to specifically stay on the porch until uh, of the of the dance school until the until 90 comes to pick her up of course lilo feeling sad she doesn't listen of course because little kids to you know as as a little bits of wisdom she spurts out you know like at least you know something that you don't expect from a little kid there's still moments of childish things you still do, like not listen and wait until her uh, uh, adult sister to come pick her up. Now, like the adult sister is like scrambling, oh my God, please be home. And she runs home and then this little girl nails the front door close and sit down, laying down, listen to her uh, Elvis records, which is kind of like what, like, where a lot of movies get wrong with certain you know female characters or just characters in general like it's like perfect example of the first suicide squad movie you hardly know most of these characters uh you know like besides their little like you know surface level stuff like katana this is katana i would advise you not she has my back i would advise you not to get cut by the sword a soul, a source takes the souls of anyone it cuts. Blah. It's like, okay, you don't even bother to like give her like, 
that little bar with like you know first appearance of katana issue blah 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 in dc whatever you don't even bother to do that it's like i was like who is this woman what is her hobbies what are her likes or her dislikes you know like who is she beyond just the superhero motif and her sword you know here lilo we know that you know she has this little creepy little doll thing that she likes uh she likes elvis records immediately she doesn't have to tell us she likes elvis we can just infer that just by the fact that she just laying down with a pile of Elvis records and listening on like a record player. Done. We immediately got that because you know uh, a lot of writers don't play kids. I mean, uh, just people in general like they're stupid. We can use our brain. We don't have to have our hands held. Uh. So then you see uh, uh, Agent Bubbles can't help but think about. Powerpuff Girls, I just call him Ving Rhames. Ving Rhames shows up because uh, he's like the uh, uh, social worker, and he like he is like just like a big dude. It's like, but with a you know heart of gold kind of thing. And of course, now he's scrambling, trying to not you know, you know, trying to make sure that you know she keeps doing everything she can to you know eat them together because they don't they're only two left which i'm thinking to myself okay the parents didn't have grandparents around no aunts uncles it's just literally you two i'm i'm saying it's like okay it's weird it's kind of the same thing with like the punisher or other characters like that uh it's like okay you don't have you know cousins grandparents uncles uh uh, uncles aunts nothing like that it's just like like you couldn't just it's like even if one of the parents was an only child and even if uh their parents were long since dead the other uh uh spouse would have more than likely a parent Cousins, siblings, it's a whole slew of family. It's unless they are adopted, which is still though, you would have adopted parents. It just, I know I'm thinking a little bit too much into it, but it just drives me kind of nuts where you, you know, do this kind of cliche of, oh, yeah, I can probably accept the fact that, you know, these two girls, you know, lost their parents and they're the only two like holding together, but you would have grandparents, wouldn't you? Aunts, uncles, cousins. That is wild to me when that is just like, you know, you don't address that. That's like, oh, we're the only two. We got each other's back. Yeah, but you also got extended family, don't you? It, I, I think like the first Punisher, but not, I mean, Thomas Jane Punisher movie, at least took the extra mile to add on the fact like, okay, it'd be kind of weird that he only lost his, you know, wife and kid, but. You know, he would have had like other relatives, wouldn't he? So it shows that, oh, the entire family from a family reunion just completely got now. Like now he's truly alone. And I was like, yes. Now it's like, you know, they they addressed that little thing. And, you know, no other punch of film or even a TV show even bothered to address that simple fact. So that's why in these Disney films, it's like it's like, you know, what like are you doing? It's like there's got to be a extended family member so that way you're not completely alone they can help out with you or even if like they don't live in hawaii with you there's like me live somewhere in another state even still they would have bothered to come send money or it comes you know come visit every once in a while just to check up on things so that way you end up losing like you know your younger sister because there's more than just you I don't know. I just thought I'd hash that out because that kind of that's probably one thing that always bothered me. Not specifically just this movie, but movies in general that deals with something like this. It always bothered me. Um uh, so uh Ving Rang's hands Lilo uh his business card saying like call me anytime if you know, something happens, whatever like that. 
and it's like a appropriate social worker that because most movies handle social workers like they're you know evil or something or just you know you know just eager to take a kid away and put him in foster care or something like that but no this is like a decent dude doing his job and from the outside looking in he's seeing that you know nani's not putting stuff together she literally had like i mean even though it's on simmer she had like literally a bunch of pots and pans you know trying to cook you know dinner for later but lilo thanks to her like locking you know literally bolting the freaking door shut that nani had to fall in just to uh get everything under control and of course lilo being like a little kid and she acknowledges it but not so by you know like they go back and forth with it but i still understand because she's just upset she's in her own little world she's not acknowledging the fact that okay i probably shouldn't bolt the do door shut uh on my sister uh but she's she's a kid she ain't thinking that far ahead outside of herself which is normally what kids do um uh and there uh, once he leaves uh you know they get into an argument and you know nani grabs her uh by the hand and she just like like a little kid just flops down <laughs> And she just goes limp. It's just like so freaking adorable and funny. Oh, and there's like a whole situation. In this movie, there's been a couple of re-edits because of some controversy controversies uh outside of this uh film uh outside of this film's control. One of them being the fact that Lilo's trying to hide in this was like some kind of crate wooden thing. But originally it was supposed to have been like a dryer. And I guess because of I don't know sure if it was like sometime after uh a little bit after the film's release and then when it went to DVD they kind of re edit some stuff. Or during the trailer, I don't know if it was during the, you know, it was shown in the trailer. It had to be after the uh film's release. There was like, you know, outcries because some kids uh, at the time we're mimicking the scene where they try to hide in the dryer and i'm not sure if there was any actual you know dead kids that came with this i think uh, uh it was at least an issue where now they got to like change it so now it looks like a wooden thing with like a pizza box on the front which is kind of like a weird thing to look at but if you know what happened behind the scenes you're like yeah i get it so it's not really an issue but it's something i wanted to address i think everybody who watched this film and do reviews about it have to address this kind of situation also it happens in a, in a climax but also this is a year after 9 11 and there was like a scene in this film originally where uh uh there was a uh, jumbo ship was flying trying to uh save lilo but it was like you know it was like a kind of like a ship chase through a city uh and because it was so reminiscent to the whole situation with the planes flying to new york and everything like that uh they had to take that out given the insensitivity just coincidental kind of thing it wasn't most uh uh anything malicious about it, it was just like a once another thing that happened and then uh same thing how like in the uh first sam remy spider-man film trailer where you see like a trailer where you know uh spider-man's eyes highlight or reflect the twin towers it had to be completely removed you know given the fact that what happened uh in new york on september 11th so uh, I thought I just needed to get that out the way. Anyway, uh, Lilo's bummed out because she feels like alone and doesn't have any friends. So, Nani decides to take Lilo to uh, the pet store and figure like, okay, so we'll get you a pet. And this is sometime like the night before when ship, uh, uh, Stitch's ship crashed in Hawaii, or, or more specifically. Uh, we'll have 
uh, Kauai, Kauai. Uh, excuse me if I kind of butchered the pronunciation. And by the way, Hawaii is like, like you know, second uh, most requested place I wanted to visit. Because the first being Japan, next thing is Hawaii. I really want to go to Hawaii. Maybe I'll say that for like a honeymoon kind of thing. Whenever I get married to a girl, like that's like a honeymoon trip. Like I really want to go to. Uh, just an excuse to go to Hawaii for like a week or so. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, Stitch is hit by a uh, uh, semi. He's alive because he's just darn near indestructible. But they think he's like a dog. He's unconscious, so they take him to like um uh to. I call it like a pet where I think it was like uh, a shelter. And of course, the other animals are just freaked out by Stitch. So Lilo sees Stitch. And of course, Stitch, you know, notices Jumba. And it's like, okay, I gotta use, you know, this family is like a human shield essentially. So, like, they can't come after me uh, full tilt. Uh, and of course, Squeaky is like, you know, is the only alien that's like, uh, who has knowledge about Earth, but it's a little misconstrued. You think like, oh, Earth is like a, you know, forest preserve kind of situation where it's like, you know, mosquitoes are a dangerous species and we've been like making sure like they are, uh, you know, you know, they're protected and everything like that. We don't want to freak out the locals, blah, blah, blah. So that's why he's coming along anyway. Just to make sure uh, it's handled delicately uh, without freaking out the populace. Uh, so, because of Stitch's you know, little wild antics, uh, Lilo merely got attached to him. She feels like a kinship with him immediately. She names him Stitch. Oh, and there's a funny little moment <laughs> where, you know, uh, while the clerk signing like the. Uh, paperwork and put a stamp of a uh, purchase of the animal uh she just asked like, okay this is two two dollars uh, uh for the payment process so nani hands the two dollars and you know uh, lilo is like i want to do the payment he hands the uh two dollars and <laughs> she hands it back to him to do the payment and nani's face like <laughs> I can't help but say, like, what was the point of that? <laughs> what was the point of that, Lilo? Uh, it, was, it was really, I don't know why, it's just really funny. And I was just like, what was the point of that? <laughs> just the satisfaction to hand the money to yourself. Uh, it was like, sure, just <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it, was, it really got me. <laughs> uh, so, but now he's like weirded out by this, you know, creature. It's like, are you sure that's even a dog? It's like this. He's just like all over the place, not behaving like a dog. It's like you looking at that, you still calling it a dog. But um, they take Stitch home, and uh, Lilo is trying to like you know domesticate Stitch in a way by uh, you know teaching you know him about like the ugly duckling, like you know. And it kind of moves Stitch because, like, he kind of feels like the ugly duckling that's feeling lost. Even like an awesome scene of him, like later on, you know, uh, uh, saying out loud, "Like I'm lost," because according to Jumba, this uh, creature, like, his only sole purpose was to go into a major city and wreak as much chaos as possible as his kind of drive, but. Since uh, they're in this island on in Hawaii, there's not much of a major city, and it kind of disappoints Stitch because he can't like do his full purpose. But now that he's kind of learning, you know, like you know, she teaching him about Elvis records and this awesome uh, scene is like uh, uh, I still remember the trailer doing like a whole thing where 
she you know doing like a dance thing with stitch and it's like it's really funny and charming uh 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 but it's it's a tough road ahead because you know a stitch is like kind of wild it's, but he still became attached to these people more so he thought meanwhile Jumba and Bleaky is trying to like do whatever they, they can to sneakily try to capture uh stitch undiscovered but you know stitch constantly you know it's like you know they trying to stall him out because uh, he they think like oh he's gonna get you know so bored with his family he you know this is his only way out is through them and it's like you know Stitch's not budging but he's like kind of again like kind of agitated about it but of course because of these antics it causes Nani to lose her job because like they like oh you know this is their dog and it's causing all this havoc you know you know literally biting on the well it's bleaky but or bleaky I keep calling him bleaky and bleaky alternating uh Pleaky. The bite on Pleaky's head. And I gotta mention this because they did make an awesome TV show out of this. And I really enjoyed watching the Leo and Stiss series, which I think like at some point in the future I want to do a review of. So I'm not sure how many seasons they had with the Leo and Stiss series. But uh Pleaky so often dressed like a woman. And, and she's just like a woman. It's like, why specifically a woman? It's not like, you know, he, uh, it's like a guy can kind of build like a woman or anything like that. Is it because of his voice? I'm not sure. It's kind of weird. They kind of, like, every time Jumbo and Pleaky in the show that I vaguely remember, when they try to get out and about in the world in disguise, Jumbo is clearly like the, the male and he's just like the female just to remain undercover and it's like I don't know it's not a big deal I just thought it kind of interesting like why always the female it's like you can really be in disguise on whoever you want uh but whatever um so because of Stick's constant you know antics and Jumbo and Pleaky's in the finish trying to capture him causes like on the outside looking in not not seeming like she's getting her stuff together not getting like a new job despite her trying and causing like having you know with uh people because on this fat guy who trying to eat his ice cream but it fails every at every attempt and try it's kind of like the cabbages guy from avatar but he was like the guy before Avatar. he was even a thing and it's like uh the uh he he's just like his fell attempt trying to just to save her some ice cream and he doesn't have any speaking roles he's just that guy and you just every and i think there's constant in it's a constant thing in the show where he's trying as he might he uh can't seem to he just looks in just down in disappointment like oh he just can't like save her an ice cream because it keeps getting destroyed by you know, random stuff caused by Stitch more than likely. I think maybe it was at the it had to be at the last final episode of the series where he finally enjoys his uh ice cream to the fullest. Anyway, uh uh the councilwoman getting frustrated uh uh from uh, waiting forever to get uh, Stitch back. Uh, they end up getting they end, the, those two aliens get fired, and they she sends uh, Gantu to go finish the job. So Jumbo feels like, oh, now we don't have to do no covert crap. So now he goes to try to forcibly capture Stitch, and this is while Nani was out trying to. Because you know her friend, uh, ah crap, got his dog name voiced by Brandon Lee, uh, not Brandon Lee, Jason Scott Lee, uh, David. 
you know, you know, rushes to her to just like, oh, we got uh you know, there's somebody hiring that they want to speak to you right now. And so she feels like, okay, Lilo, stay in the house, don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Yeah, uh, it shouldn't take too long. And that's when like well, cause you know, Stitch realizes like like I'm causing trouble. So he thinking about he's gonna uh just run away, leave these people alone, cause like, oh, I'm causing all this trouble for this family that's already having uh like issues. I'm making it worse. And it's like I, I can't do that to them. You know, Stitch is you know, feeling you know, empathy for people he's grown to care about. And I'm thinking to myself, well, because David's like, you know, you know, was, uh, telling Stitch, like, you know, these uh, these people, like, was have, was, I thought these people might have a chance, but then you came along. And it's like, before they even met this, they was like bigger than each other, and Lilo's getting in trouble in like dance class. I was like, you know, I get his sentiment, but he's reading the situation all wrong. Uh, But then it leads to a funny little confrontation between Jumbo and Stitch, where Stitch plugs one of Gantu's uh, weapons and is, you know, building the energy and is about to pop in a minute and they passing back and forth to each other. It's like, uh, this is yours. No, this is yours. You know, you know, happy birthday. Merry Christmas. I don't believe in Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> they always guess me. Uh, uh, thing goes off. Uh, but then once Nani runs back after the fire department comes rushing to put out the fire of the of their home, Big Rain shows up and just like is so angry at what happened. He's thinking like Nani was not, you know, uh being responsible. He thinks he's not being responsible. And I I wanna bring up the fact that this movie doesn't really have any villains. Where it's like uh, the social worker is just doing his job because he's seeing like you know his job is to make sure the best care Leo's get the best care as possible, and despite knowing that Nani's not a bad person, like on the outside looking in, he only seeing like okay the house is literally blown up. You are literally don't have any job. You tr- you know, I know you say you're trying, but you don't have a job right now. You need to take care of your sister. You need money for that. Uh, you're literally leaving pots and pans. And a stove on in the house with the little girls inside while you're literally trying to get inside uh, which means that you wasn't in here when the you know, stove was probably on so of course he's gonna you know think something of that and of course the console woman is not really anything evil as he sees like Stitch initially like uh, like a danger to um, many civilizations that need to be he says not you want him killed she just want him exiled she just you know think like oh he's still a living creature but uh we're gonna put him on like a desolate planet so that way you know he won't be a harm to anybody uh this is not necessarily evil he's born you know and created to do it a specific purpose by jumba who even though he calls himself like a evil genius, it's not really evil. It's like, you know, he still want to catch his tits. He ain't trying to kill. Uh, Cause he just, you know, feel like I can get my freedom. So I'll just capture you and be done with it. Uh, so there's no really anything malicious with anybody. Even Ganto, you know, he's played as like a, in the show, like, you know, a quote unquote bad guy, but he's just a cop doing his job and it's like you know i appreciate a movie that doesn't really have any bad guys like the like well i say like the first frozen movie but like i said like that that prince dude didn't really need to be there he didn't serve any purpose just to throw in some kind of bad guy that didn't really serve that didn't really need a bad guy uh uh so uh Gantu ends up capturing Stitch and Lilu after she runs away when Bing Rangs is arguing with Nani. So this when like the jig is up, everybody starts recognizing well at least Nani, Lilo, and Bing Rang start noticing the aliens. And Gantu captures, you know, 
stitch but in the process also casters lilo nani's freaking out asking jumba and pleaky is anywhere to stop anywhere to save her and they couldn't offer any solutions then then um um uh, stitch made the escape but ends up getting captured by jumba and he goes over to uh nani and uh, says to her like ohana ohana means family family means no one gets left behind or forgotten and stitch uh, decides that he uh needs jumba and pliki's help to go save lilo so they go on this chase uh with uh, gone to the end of uh, crashing then the councilwoman shows up to uh, say like okay we gotta cast her stitch but uh, seeing that stitch how civilized he is saying like may I speak to my family before I go and then like uh, showing that the affection he has for the family and uh and lilo stepping up and showing the councilwoman like uh and show her, her she just has that document on her person for some reason i was like here's this certificate and sealed i legally purchased stitch which means that he's my property and so you'll be committing theft and it's, it works there's no corny little thing about a little girl. It's like, like you be stealing from me with it ain't a due cause. She actually had like, you know, it's a setup and it came. It's not just like a certificate just to be signed. It is brought up again later to serve a particular purpose, which is really cool. I was like, you'll be stealing from me. And so the councilman it is more so out of goodness of her heart, where it's like, you know, and she acknowledges that wow, Stitch, you know, being with his family actually civilized him. So there's no reason for him to really be captured. But I'm going to play along, kind of thing. It's like, well, I was going to exile you anyway. So I figured, like, oh, I'll exile you here on Earth, and you're required to stay with this family. And this family is protected by the Galactic Federation. And she realized he, she knows Ving Rangles, and of course, Roswell. Uh, back in Roswell in the 70s and everything like that because he's former CIA so he knows like aliens exist uh, uh, so uh, Jumbo and Pookie stay on Earth uh, uh, they all become like a family rebuild the house and everything like that and uh, yeah that's where the movie ends it's like a nice little note I love this freaking film I love like this whole watercolors of the surrounding area. The when you're doing something like a movie about like water or the ocean, or at least somewhere like an island, like Lilo and Stitch and Moana are like those, or even like the Aquaman films. If you got something to do with you know bodies of water, you better damn well sh you know make sure that the water looks immaculate. It doesn't ha always have to be about specifically you know uh like aquaman it has to be within like water source most of the time but even with like something like leon stitch where you're literally on an island you're in, in hawaii surrounded by bodies of water it better look freaking immaculate and it does and even like this other surrounding areas and the luau's and everything like that everything looks great i love the design and, and the world of lilo and stitch and the fact that you know, if you watch the TV series, Lilo and Stitch do plenty of crossovers with many Disney characters. Like, the, remember the TV show Recess? The Recess Kids show up. Kim Possible shows up at one point. Uh, the Proud Family shows up at one point and, you know, crossover with uh, uh, Lilo and Stitch. Oh my God. Like, I, I miss those kind of random crossovers back in the day that actually means something and it's kind of like the way like i mentioned about how the hercules and aladdin tv shows do their couple of crossovers where like they meet each other for the first time it's crazy you know in terms of historical timelines these two should not align because hercules should have been his era and his civilization should have been long since passed and gone by the time 
Aladdin's, you know, point in history with Agrabah and everything like that would have came about. But it doesn't really matter. It's a kid's show, so they ain't trying to be historically accurate or anything like that. But it was still fun. Uh, but yeah, that was Lilo and Stitch. Great film. Highly recommend. Watch this with your kids. Hopefully they don't try to remake this crap. Leave it uh, alone. It's perfectly fine the way it is. Uh, I think they're supposed to be doing some kind of play about that kind of thing about this movie, but whatever. Uh, but it's fun. It's a fun film, a great family film. Uh, and the marketing, I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, yeah, the marketing of this, you know, like the, uh, products, the stitch products with the t-shirts and mugs and everything like that, that sold a lot. And it's thanks because of the dynamic between Lilo and stitch that really kind of sold the relationship and sold stitch as a, a, a product in a way. Of course, it's Disney. Everything's a freaking product nowadays. But it works. Because, uh, you know, both Lilo and Stitch are just a great team or a great duo. Uh, they bounce off each other so well. Uh, uh, the way they care for each other and have fun with each other. It's, it, it, it's done on a pitch perfect level that rarely I've seen replicated uh, as equally as well since then. Rarely. I'm not saying it's never been done since, but not to, you know, rarely to the same effect. But anyway, I will see you guys uh, in the next month. I'm going to be doing a lot of, at least that's the plan. Uh, there's some other stuff going on that might interrupt that. Hopefully it doesn't. But next month, I'm planning on doing a lot of Superman reviews. So stay tuned for that kind of stuff. Uh, but anyway, I'll see you guys later on tonight for more Borderlands uh, 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 playthrough. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys later. Take care. Have a great time.